James Lynch here for Fightful with Josh Rafferty, uh, who helped uh, Jake Hager train for this camp. And he's also a pretty famous guy. He was on the first season of The Ultimate Fighter. And uh, Josh, uh, it's so great to talk to you. You're actually, your season was the season that got me to be an oh, MMA right fan. Right so yeah. it's actually really cool for me to talk to you. But first, I know you've had a lot going on since uh, you, know, you, you left uh, your MMA career. Yep. You've been doing some coaching, I know, not just with MMA fighters, but with wrestlers as well. Yeah, How yeah. did you get into that? Uh, you know what? Uh, there was a period of time when I was uh, finishing up my MMA career. I kind of got involved in pro wrestling myself. So I started learning, I got trained in pro wrestling, learned how to work matches and stuff, and then I became friends with a lot of the guys. Uh, then in 2000, uh, what was it, 2011, I moved down to Tampa with Dave Batista to start a gym, and as everybody knows, there's a lot of rest, people in the wrestling business live in Tampa, so from there I just started training a lot of the guys, a lot of guys coming in and working with me, so I've kind of built a good relationship with a lot of the guys in WWE and helping them out with a lot of their cross training. I take it you were a fan of wrestling growing up? Yeah, I was a huge fan of wrestling growing up. Who were your guys? Who did you like watching? Oh, man. Man, I mean, if you're talking about the 80s, I love the Road Warriors. Uh, Brian Pillman was my favorite wrestler ever, Brian Pillman. I loved Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, of course. Uh, Ric Flair, Sting, uh, Stone Cold, all those guys, man. That was a big... That's, that's an all-star lineup yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, right? yeah, no, it's great. So, Jake Hager, I know you guys go way back. Yep. He's he. You were the first guy he called. What did that mean to you, just for you know going to you and saying, look, help train me? Oh, it was, it was awesome. I was excited about it, man. Uh, you know, it was not every day you get to work with a guy that's uh, that high level coming from, a, you know, another realm of entertainment with pro wrestling, plus his background with college football and college wrestling. I mean, the guy's had thousands of amateur wrestling matches. So to get, get to work with a guy like that, it's really, it's really special. It's cool, man. Plus, we were friends on top of it, so it was, it was awesome, man. I was really excited for him. How has his transi transition been? I, it bothers me when people say, oh, it's like CM Punk, because, you know, Jake actually had a collegiate background and, and all that stuff. How was, how was his transition, in your opinion? Uh, I feel like it was really smooth. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, 12 years away from com competition is hard, though. You know, we had to get him back and get in the ring, get on the mat every day, get used to competing again, because entertainment with pro wrestling is completely different. You know what I mean? It's a uh, night and day. So uh, I thought the transition was smooth, man. He was in there. Uh, it, at first, it was a little difficult because he's still on the road, still wrestling, you know, every weekend and stuff. But uh, once we started to camp, man, he got in awesome shape, and uh, he really he brought it, man. It was great. It was really smooth, I think, you know. Do you still watch pro wrestling now? Yeah, I try to watch wrestling. I have what a lot do you like right now? Obviously, Becky Lynch is the talk. Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you enjoy about the industry right now? Uh, you know what? I feel like uh, the pro wrestling industry is starting to get a little bit more excitement going. You know, uh, of course, the social media kind of highlights that a little bit. You know, people like Becky Lynch are real popular now. Uh, but also, you know, the indie wrestling with Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes and, you know, the new uh, wrestling league they're starting. That's pretty cool. So I feel like wrestling right now is kind of like getting to be how it was in the late 90s. It's starting to get a little bit of excitement. You're going to have another league. You don't know what guy's going where. I think we're kind of getting on the cusp of that right now. It's pretty cool. So that's what I like. Samoa uh, Joe is probably my favorite guy to watch right now, though. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, that's a good choice. Um, wh why did you leave your MMA career? Because uh, you just had, I think, a couple fights after after the tough finale. Yeah. What, 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 what made you come to that decision? Yeah. Well, what, what happened with me is, uh, you know, I had a couple fights. Uh, I had a couple good fights actually after the, the tough finale. Once I was released by the UFC, uh, that's when I started getting into wrestling. But I had a really bad neck injury in 2010, so I broke my neck training actually, and I didn't know about it. And uh, I continued to fight. Actually, my last fight was in Bellator, and I fought that fight with a really bad neck injury. And uh, after that, I had neck surgery, and I was just like, you know what? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do this again. I was 30 years old. I was done wrestling, done MMA. I wanted to do coaching. There's a lot of stuff I wanted to do. I had a job in the real world and stuff, so it's like uh, I wasn't for sure what I was going to do, but uh, I, I wanted to do, I uh, got involved in jiu-jitsu again and started rolling every day. I still train a lot and I wanted to train for another fight and then I got hit by a truck so I had another neck injury so just too much, too many injuries, too much wear and tear and you know I started really young. I, you know, I had my first fight when I was 17. You know I had two fights before I turned 18 and that's back before you know it was even called MMA. It was in the late 90s and stuff so this is a wear and tear and just got kind of burned out. You really want to do something different. You know? Do you feel like you got kind of a raw deal on tough because you had to fight Diego and I know you guys were friends and it seemed to me, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on this, did, did it mentally play on you just that you guys were friends it seemed like you really didn't want to fight him you know what I at the time I didn't want to fight him I didn't I just like because and it, it was more of like look I train with this guy every day twice a day he knows everything I do I know everything he does but that's the nature of the show as well so it's like more of me just kind of uh kind of being a bitch about it a little bit you know looking back at it but you had to fight somebody and at that point I was like you know what let's just go for it right now let's fight him 
I, I, I at the time I thought I matched up well with him, which obviously I didn't. Uh, well, but, but uh, I mean, yeah. Mentally, you got to be 100 percent going in, and, and you know, no, knowing it's it's weird, you know, when going to the fight, you watch videos, the guy you prep for, a guy you hear stories, or this guy's good at this. But on that show, we really knew everything. We knew each other in and out, and I think that's at first, I think that's why some of the fights weren't as good. You know, you train with everybody every day, you kind of know their tricks. But it was just it was a weird experience overall. But man, I really liked it. It, it, it you know it made me a better person, a better fighter too. You know, who do you still keep in touch with on, from that cast at all? Uh, it's funny to say we just did a reunion uh, that, yeah. show back in August. And it was really cool to see each other. But uh, who I keep in touch with, I keep in touch with Stefan Bonner. Him and I are really good friends. Uh, Alex Schoenauer, Chili Dog. I keep in touch with him. Nate Corey, I talk to still. Kenny Florian, every once in a while, we hit each other on social media. But that's about it for the most part. Kind of everybody kind of went their own way. Chuck Liddell, I talk to Chuck every once in a while. You know, he was like a like uh, one of my idols for a while. I love Chuck, man. He's somebody I looked up to a lot, you know. I know being from Ohio, I used to work with Rich Franklin a bit. Are you guys still in touch? Yeah, yeah. Rich and I are still friends. Uh, you know, I was in Rich's wedding. We had our first time. Rich and I watched UFC 3 together. That's how long we've known each other. So, yeah, we're like brothers, man. So we don't talk for a while. It's just, we don't skip a beat, you know. How do you see this fight ending on Saturday with Jake? Uh, obviously, we know for him for his wrestling, but I'm sure his striking is really uh, honed up as well. How do you see this unfolding? Yeah, I think, uh, I think Saturday night, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. I think it's going to be a very violent, bloody finish. I think you're going to see... Some very, very intense ground and pound, some stuff you haven't seen for a while. So that's my prediction. Thanks so much for the time.